In this video, we're going to look at the basic criteria for evaluating classification models in machine learning. The first thing to look at is the concept of accuracy or misclassification error. Accuracy, very simply, is the number of correctly classified records divided by total number of records. In other words, how many times did the computer guess correct divided by how many things was it trying to predict? That's fairly straightforward. And error is the inverse. So it's an error means that something was classified wrong. So something was actually true, but the computer said it was false or it was actually false and computer said it was true. And the error rate is the number of misclassified records divided by the total number of records. Now it happens that accuracy is just one minus the error rate and the error rate is just one minus accuracy. They're simple inverses of each other. So the idea of accuracy is fairly straightforward, but it, what is also very important is how to determine if an accuracy value you get is actually a good one. So now we're going to talk about the benchmark for classification. That is, against what are you comparing the results of a classification to see how good it actually is? What is it that you're comparing it with? Intuitively, especially you have two classes, if the computer is guessing if things are true or false, you say 50-50. If it does better than 50% accuracy, you think it's a good model. Well, not so fast. The naive rule or the simplistic rule is that you should assume that all the records belong to the most prevalent or the most frequent, uh, that is the modal class of whatever it is that you're trying to classify. Okay, now let me try to explain this with an example. Suppose you're offering um, sales to a client and 80% of your customers accept your offer and 20% decline. So then you have a machine learning model that tries to predict how many people would say yes and how many would say no. And the question is, how good is that model? Well, let me think up a model which is a pretty simple one, I would say everyone says yes. Everyone says yes. Okay, think that, I mean, that's a pretty silly model. Of course, everyone is not going to say yes, but actually that model is 80% accurate, which I think 80% is not bad. How is it 80% accurate? Well, as I've said, 80% of customers accept the offer and 20% decline. So if I say everyone says 100, everyone says 100% will say yes, well, okay, I'm going to be wrong sometimes, but I'll be wrong only 20% of the time, and I'll be correct 80% of the time. Therefore, without even thinking, just saying everyone says yes, I have an accuracy of 80%. And that's how it always works. If you just pick the larger category, like if you had a 60, 40, I said, everyone says yes, you automatically have accuracy 60%. And, and it just worked that way. Or even if it were 60% or let's say 70% said no, 30% said yes. I say everyone says no then because no is more than yes. I get 70% accuracy. Just a simple way to get an inflated accuracy. And therefore, that becomes the benchmark. So in this example, with 8% of customers saying yes, and I say, if everyone says yes, then I have 8% accuracy. Therefore, if I'm going to apply fancy machine learning techniques to this problem, rather than just my naive rule guess, then the machine learning tool needs to do better than 80%, because without thinking, I can get at 80%. So that means that if I apply machine learning technique that gets, uh, let's say, 75% um, accuracy, but I'll say without thinking, I can get at 80% accuracy. So that's 75% accuracy from machine learning is useless. It's worse than useless. 
I can do better than that without even thinking. In order for me to say it's a good machine learning model in this scenario, it needs to be beat 80%. Therefore, if it had 85% accuracy, I will say, okay, now you're talking. Now, that's a useful model. Maybe it's not great, but it's definitely better than random chance. It's better than my naive rule. And that's how you set the benchmark of the machine learning model. Now, if you have a scenario where you have more than two classes, you always pick the prevalence or the frequency of the largest class. So for example, if you have three classes uh, with class A, 25%, class B, 40%, and class C, 35%, then you say everyone picks B. And if everyone picks B, then 40% of the time you're going to be correct, and you need a model that beats 40%. So whatever the split is, you predict that to be the most frequent class, and that percentage becomes your benchmark that your model needs to be to beat in order to be considered useful. So a good model must beat the accuracy of the naive prediction, and any model that cannot beat the naive prediction is a bad model. That's a basic uh, criteria. So looking at how exactly we calculate uh, the accuracy measures, the classic tool is what is called a classification matrix or a confusion matrix. In this scenario, we have um, predictions of zeros and ones, and they could be anything. One could be the customer buys, zero the customer does not buy. One could be the patient has a, a disease, zero the patient does not have the disease. So. Without understanding, on the top here, or in the columns, we have the actual facts in the real data, either zeros or ones, and on the rows, we have predictions of the algorithm or the model of zeros and ones. And sometimes you find the classification matrix flipped with predictions on top, actuals on the left, they're equivalent. So whenever, the model predicts a one and the actual value in real life is a one that is called a true positive and when it predicts a zero and the actual fact is a zero it's called a true negative and you can state whichever one you consider positive in your case but if it predicts a zero but the actual fact is a one that is called a false negative and if the model predicts a one but the actual fact is a zero you call that a false positive and based on these um, categorizations of your results, you can calculate some relevant statistics of the performance of your classification model. The error rate is counting all the falses, all the wrong guesses, so the false positive plus the false negatives, divide by everything. There's 3,000 instances here. So there's 125 false pulses, 285 false negatives, divided by 3,000 gives you an error rate of 13.67%. The accuracy, on the other hand, is you count the percentage of true and correct guesses. So the total of true negatives plus the true positives divided by the total, 3,000, here gets 86.33%. And mathematically, the accuracy is one minus the error rate, and the error rate is one minus the accuracy so you can see that here. Now, the question is, this model predicts with 86.33% accuracy, is that good or bad? So here's, uh, here's where we get to the rub. We have to consider the benchmark for what is a good prediction. Remember, the benchmark comparison is a total of the larger category. We have two categories here, zeros and ones divided by the total count. So the larger category we can easily see are the zeros, so the actual zeros. So your the benchmark is based on the actuals, not on the predictions. So the you have 2189 true negatives and plus 125 false positives. It's all is all the actuals that are larger divided by the total 3000, you have 77.13%. And that, that means that if I were to say everything is a zero, then I would be accurate to 77.13%.
and therefore a good model must be 77.13%. And based on that, our accuracy is 86.33%. Therefore, this is considered a good, useful model. If it were less, like even if it were 75%, it would be a bad and useless model because it can't even beat the naive benchmark. Now, although accuracy is fairly simple, it's important to understand that it is not the only and it's not even the most important measure of the performance of a classification model. Um, in fact, accuracy, that's a number of correct responses, true negatives plus true positives, divided by total number of responses, often does not reflect what is the most important to people. Its main advantage is that it's easy to understand how often were you, what's the percentage of times or the rate at which you were correct, but it has a fundamental assumption, and that is that correct and incorrect responses are equally important. But this is often not true. Uh, so I gave two examples. If you're looking at what customers buy or not buy, for most businesses, it's more important that a customer buys. It's a bigger deal that a customer buys than the vast majority of customers who bypass and don't buy. You want to spend a lot of effort on those who would buy you wouldn't consider those equal. In medical testing, does the patient have a disease or not? Well, it's kind of a big deal that the patient has a disease. It's usually that's more important than if they don't. Well, it depends on what the disease is, um, but if it's a life-threatening disease, you'd like to catch it very early. And even if you make a mistake and say they have the disease, but they really don't, well, further tests could clear that up, but you don't want to miss that. So both sides are not necessarily equal, and so accuracy often doesn't quite reflect what's most important. So we need to look at classification measures that emphasize uniquely what is most important in the particular situation that the analysts are doing their modeling. It's beyond the scope of this video to go into detail, but a lot of statistics have been developed uh, uh, for these purposes. Um, precision, recall, sensitivity, and specificity in particular. And in another video, we'll go into these in more detail. Um, but the principle of the benchmark still applies. They have benchmarks based on the naive model, decide what's useful or not. And they're all based, as you can see from these formulas, on understanding what are true positives and true negatives. And so these are the basic uh, foundations, uh, foundational principles of evaluating classification performance.